You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to your Golden Hour with host Miriam Turcotte. In the Golden Hour, Miriam will discuss topics that will help you grow at the level of spirituality so that you may increase self-awareness, self-empowerment, and how to grow exponentially in order to avoid repeating those same mistakes over and over. Life on Earth is a mission, and many of the answers are inside of us. So now, please welcome the host of your Golden Hour, Miriam Turcott. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, before I go on to the topic of my show, I want to send my thoughts and prayers for the families of all those lost on the terror attacks of 9-11. And, and even though it's been 18 years, I know those lost are still missed. And on, on behalf of our production teams here at Bold Brave Media and Tony Radio, we want to send our love to all who suffered this tragic loss. Know that your loved ones are in, are, are in spirit with you, and they, they know the consequences this event caused worldwide and how it changed our freedoms and the history of our humanity today. We can still feel the trauma effects of this as a community who witnessed these horrific acts. Also, for the health of many first responders that work on ground zero for months and became ill with cancer and other serious diseases, I have also lost their battles to it. God bless you all. Now, um, I want to talk about self-esteem and how I personally manage criticism or, or how I manage bad intention people. And, and the topic of today is how much you value yourself. It, in other words, you know, um, if we take the, uh, the words of Dale Carnegie, who, who once said, any fool can criticize, condemn, I complain, and most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to understand, to be understanding and be forgiving. And that, in a nutshell, is the conversation of today. Uh, so the definition of self-esteem, it, this is a term used in psychology to reflect the person's overall emotional evaluation of his of her own worth uh, we we get law we get a lot of criticism and it, it comes from many people that are close to us our family teachers schoolmates boyfriends girlfriends spouses friends co-workers supervisors so some are actually with good intentions but others have an ulterior motive. And that's what we need to define. In my personal experiences, it, it, it really has taught me to fight back in many instances. And, and fighting back doesn't mean you are declaring a war on others. It really isn't. It, it just means uh, that you need to create healthy boundaries I'm pointing out that it's not their place to criticize and that said criticism is unwanted. We have a, our share of successes and no one, no one really, trust me, no one wants to be criticized. Not you, not me, not anybody. 
it, it really it really is uh, you know it, it it takes our peace out of place however when you're relating to people some will give you feedback about something that concerns them but criticism is undeniably unnecessary yeah we are living in a world where Feedback is important for business success, whether you have a small business or or work for a large corporation. You know, we want our internal and external customers to be happy with our products our serv- or, or our services or whatever we have to offer. At a personal level, it is a different story. Unless we ask for feedback, no one should be entitled to give it, you know, in the workplace, interacting with coworkers and supervisors, you know, you can, you can trace an imaginary fine line as to what is good or negative, you know, in terms of feedback. And in my experience working with colleagues, I always try to maintain a healthy relationship and I would never give anyone any commentary unless they're asking for advice. On the other hand, supervisors receiving negative comments with supervisors, you receive negative comments or, you know, or feedback. And I find a way to test um, limits uh, on, on your tolerance. I have been diplomatic and strategic in, in, any, in any case with any manager. Why? Well, they're, they're actually paying the bill. You know, that you, you are hired to do a job. Therefore, you have to be, you know, uh, open to that feedback. When, the, when that feedback is negative and it's not actually feedback and you can, ha- and you can actually separate feedback to criticism. Because it's very obvious. I do, I do not shy out at backhanded comments, whether it's a supervisor or a colleague or anybody, you know. I, I have been standoffish and at times not so level-headed <laughs> with my critics, you know. And, and I, I, I got to admit that I learn, you know, as I go from those previous experiences. So... You know, if you if you take social media, for example, you know, uh, society is so connected today, you know, and they they will share their thoughts about, you know, what they think of you or what they think of what you are doing uh, immediately, immediately, because most of all the sites have comments Um but there seems to be a loss of common courtesy and respect for others. And in reality, there's no place in our society to attack others' self-esteem. It really isn't. That's out- outrageous. What is happening in social media is, you know, what they call it, the troll patrol. And for the most part, those people acting like trolls who give nasty comments to others, they have, they must have so, so serious insecurities that they surface when their ideals or belief systems clash with yours. And that is actually bullying. And if we don't want our kids to go through bullying in schools, then we should be good role models and apply the same rules to ourselves in whatever situation we are. Um, I want to mention that that if you are interested in being part of this conversation, um, don't hesitate to call us. Our number is 866-451-1451. And uh, why don't we take a small break to let... um, our advertisers showcase their products 
We'll be right back. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and tune in radio. Welcome back, guys. I was talking about uh, social media and the trolls that comment negatively uh, against what your beliefs are, you know. And um, I, I want you to understand, we as human beings have different perspectives, you know. We're all born in different families. We have different values, we come from different generations, and we have different cultures. And all of that totality shape our belief systems. Therefore, we, we, we are cemented into that, you know, ideology that, that our ideas are, you know, valid. So are the ideas of somebody else with, a, let's say, a different political party. You know, it is important, though, to underline that unless, you know, you, you know, you um, get insulted by somebody in, on the Internet, you know, uh, it, and, and, and this is important also to, to cons, you know, to consider, you know, you can block people. You, you don't have to let people undermine your self-esteem. You can block people, you can uh, cut the comments, you don't have to engage in, in an argument with, with every single person that comes your way and says something negative about you. The reality, reality of it is, is that in mo- most, uh, most often times, people react like that when their belief system is threatened. You know, so um, I, I, I personally do not believe it is somebody's right to make others unworthy. I really don't. You know, we, we, we are in a society that that's happening more often than not. And that, you know, that's bullying that creates people. You know, if people have a, a fragile mental health condition, you don't know what this person is going to react to. So I think the best way to handle things is usually to have a lot of self-control. And that's something I learned throughout my entire life is the self-control is the key to avoid, uh, you know, a bad outcome, if you will. You know, um, Self-esteem is innate in all of us. We cannot function properly if someone hurts our self-worth. Really, it doesn't. And um, 
in the workplace, for example, managers, they're required to go through training in order to develop fair, equitable, and non-judgmental skills when it comes to uh, dealing with perform- performance, you know, of their employer employees. I, I had a boss once that in my performance review dialogue, he, he asked me where I saw myself in five years. Being my first performance review, and I really liked him as a person. I thought he was fair and equitable. I just opened up and, and honestly said that I saw myself growing out of the role into something different. Yeah, I explained to the manager that I have done the same job for much too long in my career and wanted to learn new things and expand my horizons. <laughs> well, surprise, I got a bad review. And, and the next year, I got the same merit review again. Of course, I, I expected a better rating than that because after all, I had put all my hard work and my dedication and I was very loyal to this manager. Uh, and, and in my opinion, I did my job very well done and supported close to almost 100 people in his department. And, and, and I have, for the most part, worked in very large organizations, which I was used to. So I was kind of surprised. You know, with time, I, I realized that all he wanted was an admin to support him. And his only way to keep me there was by giving me a bad review. Yeah. So no matter where you work, the rating systems are all the same. And it's done with the purpose to create a standard of measurement of, of your work. And, and a history of medium rate performance would not allow you to, to get a job within another job within the, the company, you know, because that's, that's your, your history, your record, you know, when, when people have the power and the upper hand uh, on a situation uh, and if they, they affect your self-esteem and, and self-worth, you really need to take a step back and look at this the situation with a fish eye view. And the analysis will help you see why this person is so critical of you. Sometimes the answers will surprise you. Anyways, um, I want to read an excerpt of the Harvard Business Review article on how managers judge people in performance reviews. This, this article was written in 2011 by Linda A. Hill and Kent Lineback. She is a Wallace Brett Donham uh, professor of business administration at Harvard Business School. And Kent uh, spent many years as a manager and an executive in business and government. Uh, they co-authored this research paper titled Being the Boss, the three imperatives for becoming a great leader. So open quote, human performance is never completely consistent. That's true of a violinist, a gymnast, a university lecturer, and it's true of everyone who works for you and of you too. No one performs at their best or worst every day. We all know this, and it's why we assess the true greatness of, say, a soccer player, not by her performance in a single game, but over a full season or even a playing career. In other words, we look at that player's average performance over time, or to use the statistician's statistician's term, the mean performance. And I'm going to continue with this uh, segment uh, 
please listen to our advertisers. We'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome, everybody. This is Miriam, your host of Your Golden Hour. This is the BBM Global Network and Tuning Radio. And I was uh, reading an excerpt of a Harvard Business Review article, and I'm going to repeat the, the previous paragraph for those who, uh, who missed it. Uh, this is um, an excerpt of Being the Boss, the Three Imperatives uh, for Becoming a Great Leader. Human performance is never completely consistent. That's true of a violinist, a gymnast, a university lecturer, and it's true of a performance who works, of everyone who works for you, and, and of you too. No one performs at their very best or worst every day. We all know this, and that's why we assess the true greatness of, say, a soccer player, not by her performance in a single game, but over a few a full season, and even her playing career. In other words, we look at the player's average performance over time, or to use the statistician's term, her mean performance. If you track someone's performance task by task, you'll discover that a great performance, once that's far above the person's average or mean, is usually followed by a less inspiring performance that's closer to the mean. It, it works the same, the same the other way. A terrible performance is usually followed by something better. No one's making or causing this to happen. It's part of the variability built into human activity, especially when doing something even moderately complex. The problems and misperceptions arise when we forget this. Why would we forget something so obvious? Because even when we know performance can vary widely around a mean, we tend to, for, to give greater weight to someone's most recent performance. Unconsciously, we consider it better indicator of overall capability than what happened two days ago or last week, our minds tend to overrate the importance or accuracy of the latest, most easily available, or most prominent information. Now, here, the where mean is based on a statistical value. It refers to the average that it's used to derive the central tendency of the data in question. It's a statistical term. So, so before I go further into this topic today, I would like to say I have had awesome bosses. 
and had stellar relationships with many of them and many other people throughout my career. For that, I'm eternally grateful for their trust, trust and a vote of confidence. These this relationships balance out any of the negative experiences I've had. And it always restores my faith in people in general. Even though we're no longer working together, they hold a special place in my heart. And, and some are still, still my friends. I, I am grateful for all the experiences, good or bad. You know why? Because your biggest challenges will bring you the transformation and change you need. And sometimes this, <clears throat> these people are just playing the role in the school of life to help bring the best out of you. So with that said, I will say superv supervisors will give you feedback, positive or negative. But we need to distinguish between that and criticism. Why? That's where self-esteem plays out. Let's say, for example, someone tells you you're always making mistakes. Hey, guess what? That's criticism. If they say that you need to check back before submitting the final proof of the document, well, yeah, that's feedback. <laughs> so a long time ago, I had a boss that would hold any assignments until my quitting time. She made me late for my son's daycare every single day. And by the time I left that office, the traffic was a nightmare. This was the boss from hell. Like the movie, The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, man, she was much worse. She was a tall, big bone structure woman with a very sophisticated look. She was always dressed in suits and her looks were stylish and polished. She was impeccable. She, she knew how to express herself, and I thought she would be my mentor. I really look up to her. She was highly respected by most of the people in the company for her ta talent and, you know, the, the, the professional skills she had. However, she had a dark side. A side she would not reveal to anyone except her victim. Unfortunately, I was that victim. In six months, I lost so much weight from the stress, I had to buy new clothes. And since she didn't ask me to work, I felt morally obligated to help other people and other departments because I found it an ill insult to work for a company doing nothing. I lost my self-worth and self-esteem. I dreaded going to work. I really did. I fear getting her upset. And if she did, she would put me down. I never knew what was going to be a trigger. You know, it was, it was anybody's guess. In fact, in the presence of others, she was very polite and had a calm demeanor. But once others were gone, she would call me useless and stupid. The time went on and things did not improve. They actually got worse. Finally, I got my break. My manager went to Europe to a conference that was, you know, like sponsored by the company. And before I continue on with this story, I want you to stay tuned and listen to my sponsors. So we will be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. 
wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Thank you, guys, uh, for staying tuned tune with us. This is Miriam, your host of your golden hour. This is the BBM Global Network and Tuning Radio. And um, I was telling the story about... Uh, a, a boss, uh, uh, you know, that was, she was a, a true horror. She was mean and despicable. And, and, and um, as the time went on, nothing, nothing improved. I, I had faith that, that she will change. But, and I really didn't know why she wouldn't. You see, that's the part that we're going to analyze at the end of the story. So finally, I got my break. My my manager went to Europe uh, to a company conference, and she was going to stay there for two weeks at, on vacation after the conclusion of of the event. So I I went on a job search and I found a post posting a, on a job. Uh, I sent my resume to the recruiter, went to the interview and accepted the offer, all, all of this in the two weeks while she was out on vacation. And trust me, I was not discriminating about the job. I just wanted to get out of there. So when she returned, I went to her office to give her my two weeks notice. And, and um, you know, I, I walked in and I told her that I was that I found a job and I was going to be leaving in two weeks because that would be, you know, the, um, the specified time usually that people have to give to employers. And she was very calm. She got up from her desk, went around me. Uh, she closed the office door and then she sat down again in her desk and immediately started screaming at me. She was completely out of control. I, I kept my composure. I, I stayed quiet through the entire rant, you know, because I already was like, you know, immune to it. Especially because I had a new job. Uh, so when she was done insulting me, I told her that if I was that useless that stupid and that moronic, she should be happy that I was leaving instead. The HR manager, and this, this all corporations do that, you know, there is a, a, an exit interview and the HR manager had a meeting uh, for my onboarding process. And she asked me for recommendations on what kind of personality type this manager needed 
as an assistant? My first answer was, I said, no one should ever be put through misery to support this person. That's not what you come to work for. You come to work to get along, to have a peaceful interaction with people and and be productive. And I didn't have a chance to be productive to her. I had to find it within myself to be productive with other departments. <laughs> so the irony, you know? And I told her, too, that she probably needed therapy and coping skills for her own personal life. Because her behavior, although unacceptable, had been tolerated by the management for years. They disregarded the emotional toll she imparted on her victims. I found out that she started as an assistant And she worked her way up to her current position with the company. And that, that gave me the key answer in my analysis. I thought that perhaps she was so mean and and overprotective of her current role. And she did not want anyone to take it away by behaving in, in this way, she would remove any possible threats. See? So during our meeting, you know, my recommendation to the HR manager was to get a male assistant. They were surprised by my answer. I thought it was very clever. But my analysis was that she had no respect for fellow women, therefore she should or would exert more restraint in verbally abusing a male. Now, there's a lot of people with personality disorders. And and some of of these people with, with mental problems are in positions of power. And they will abuse it. There is manipulators, narcissists, you name it, the works. And some of them, you know, know how to mask that persona in the workplace. And it goes undetected for years. If you have a supervisor like that, do what I did. Find another job. Don't try to solve it. Don't try to fight it. It's, it's useless. Do you know why? Usually, HR is not trained to detect insane people because they can hide all of this from others' view. And they would only target certain individuals with personalities that possess a high level of conscience and and uphold high moral values. Those are the victims of these people. There are all kinds of relationships. Many will test you to see if you will stand up for yourself. If you play the victim role, then it will permeate and that's what happened to me with this, with this manager. And, and it's happened to me again a few other times. I will never forget the true lesson there. And it was that I did not stood up for myself immediately at the first instance. I didn't have the courage I let her do it for months and months. Why? Well, I was a young mother. I needed a job to support my kid and pay my bills. And I was willing to put up with that treatment because taking care of my kid was much more important to me. I put myself second. And, and that's what we're going to discuss next 
once we have our commercial advertisers uh, and here in BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, this is Miriam, your host of Your Golden Hour. Bye. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veterans folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic. On the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Culler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Uh, thank you for staying with me. This is Miriam, your uh, host of Your Golden Hour. And I was discussing a topic about uh, uh, self-esteem. And self-esteem is a key in everything in your life, what, whatever relationship you have. If your self-esteem is at stake, then you have to do something about it. And the action has to come from you. And uh, as I said earlier, there are all kinds of relationships. Uh, and many will test you to see if you will stand up for yourself. So playing the victim role is not a good thing. Never. No matter what kind of relationship it is. Because when you play the victim role, the only one that loses is you. I will never forget the true lessons that I have learned throughout my entire life, whether in personal or or working relationships. I have understood what self-esteem and self-worth means. It means you have to protect your boundaries, your emotions, your knowledge, you know, because you cannot let people walk all over you. If you allow it, you are as far as, as as responsible for it as the other person. It's absolutely true, because respect comes two ways. It has to come from the person that addresses you, 
and it has to come from you. And you have to respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself, then who's going to do it? My lesson here was that I let her insult me for months and months. And that's when I had to step back and analyze why was this happening to me? So the next rule you should consider, you are always number one. You need to demand respect. And if it is up, not up to any kind of negotiation, respect is an equal, equal give and take. You are as important member of this society, regardless of your skill, your position in a company, your college degree, or even lack of. Once you allow this behavior to occur, without setting the proper boundaries, it will continue. So you are responsible for, for always putting the right boundaries. And if experience has repeated itself many times, then you need to step back and see what is causing that problem. Well, it's usually <clears throat> lack of boundaries but the boundaries relate to what? Respect. With respect, nothing bad can happen to you. When abuse happens, you must bring the issue in a conversation. And don't, don't lose your cool. You know, always act in a calm and unattached way. To let the person know they're infringing in your peace. And therefore, they need to behave in a, in a way that it does not undermine your self-esteem. The bottom line is that we all criticize on some point in our daily existence. The reasons why we interact with people with different belief systems and some of these clashes with our own. The best example of that is, is nowadays <clears throat> in politics. I hope people go out of their way to insult you, you because you have a different belief system. Well, you know what? It takes great restraint not to complain about someone or something. I, I think it's a true test of our humanity to be truly conscious about limiting our opinions to others. It is hard to do. Trust me, it is. But the more you practice self-control, and this is the key operative word, self-control, the better it gets. Ultimately, negative opinions <clears throat> only hold power over you if you believe them. Otherwise, it is someone else's opinion of you. <clears throat> and whether it is true or not what they are saying, it shouldn't rattle you unless you allow it. No? I, I would be a hypocrite if I, I have not done this at some point. It is part of human conditioning. And, and it starts when we are very young. I mean, I, I started the self-awareness practice after all of my experiences. And as much as I want to say something to someone, I choose not to. Remember, when you unleash an energetic reaction, meaning negative feedback to someone, you have better be ready for it once you do. If you rather be peaceful and not having conflicts then the best practice is not to say anything. And ultimately, the worst criticism is the one you give yourself. Therefore, your best cheerleader, no matter how much noise there is around you, is you. Believe in yourself. If you do you will project 
confidence and it will work as a barrier against negative people. If someone criticizes you, remember, that is their opinion and it's not and should not be of your concern. Listen to it if you must and move on. Unless it is a repeated event, if it's repeatedly done to you by the same person, then set your boundaries and make it clear you will not stand for it. Instead of giving into negative people's feedback, there's a lot you can do. And because I have this list that I want to share with you, I'm going to take a break for uh, our advertisers and we'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book coached to greatness unlock your full potential with limitless growth Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio. This is Miriam, your host of Your Golden Hour. And I was talking about self-esteem. And uh, I'll talk about some key points, but I was I was stating that the worst criticism is the one that you give yourself. Um, if someone criticizes you, remember, it, that's that's only their opinion, you know. Opinion, you know, when people talk, they they are emitting energy, you know. If if you are so self scrutinizing yourself constantly, you're gonna feel, you know, overwhelmed. Don't be. You know, if they say something, it ends when they finish that conversation. Move on. Unless, of course, it's it's repeatedly done by the same person. And when it's repeatedly done by the same person, you know, the person has some issues. It could be whether a narcissist, a manipulator. They want to turn your emotions into into something that you cannot handle. Instead of giving into negative people's feedback, meditate and always have a list of affirmations to read daily that you are an amazing person and you are capable of many great things. List all the things you want to achieve as if they are already true in your life. Remember, making mistakes only helps you get better at what you do. To err is human. When you make mistakes, you learn what was wrong. When you do the task again, you will know and improve the outcome of your efforts. It, that's as simple as that. 
So remember, practice makes perfect. And a lot of practice will make you an expert. Most of all, believe, you know, believe in yourself. Practice self-awareness. Practice self-control. And, and, and give yourself always a pat in the back. You're here on earth for a reason. That in itself tells you uh, you are an amazing and special human being. Do not allow the naysayers to tell you otherwise, okay? Uh, so there is this phrase, uh, actually a quote from Leonard Ber- Bernstein. He says, I have been all over the world. And I've never seen a statue of a critic that goes to tell you that being a naysayer and a critic is not being an achiever. An achiever is a person who focuses on themselves and tries their best. And that's what you are going to do from today onwards. I want to thank you for listening. Uh, Please come back next Wednesday at 5 p.m. We will have Gail Minogue uh, for, for a discussion on numerology and its uses. Gail is a trend analyst, uh, and she's a numerology expert. And she will give us uh, great advice to improve our chances in, in different aspects of our lives. Uh, she, she's, she's in uh, L.A., and she's done uh, a lot of work with corporations a uh, very interesting individual i hope that you guys uh find this particular uh podcast interesting and i hope that you tune in next week on your golden hour at the bbm global network and tuning radio thanks for listening good night This has been your Golden Hour with host Miriam Turcotte. Listen each week and learn how to develop better habits and better attitudes so that you may integrate them into your everyday life and shift your belief system right here on your Golden Hour. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.